is seeing historic success in the Everglades. As Fox 35's Carlo Byron explains, it's helping to remove Burmese pythons from the wild in record numbers. The world chuckled when Florida revealed its intention to release predators into the wild. It sounded hazardous, even reckless. However, a desperate science experiment was the driving force behind the debate. This was the last resort for the dying Everglades. Everything we believed to be true about the balance of nature would be put to the test by what came next. Prior to making too much fun of Florida's gambling, perhaps we ought to inquire, what sort of situation compels people to make such a drastic decision? What was going on that nobody appeared to be aware of? Let's go back to the beginning. The quiet end of the world. The Florida Everglades resembled something from a nature documentary long before this mayhem started. Only the glimmer of shallow water interrupted the unending green sawgrass that extended into the horizon. Here, bobcats prowled the brush's borders, raccoons darted through the wetlands, and birds soared overhead. Every organism had a role to play in a system valued at an estimated $31.5 billion annually, and life moved in harmony. Because no one thought that equilibrium could break so subtly, it was one of the few locations on Earth where wild still meant wild. Now, this story begins with a storm rather than a big bang. Hurricane Andrew ripped through southern Florida in 1992, damaging a reptile breeding facility close to Miami and leveling homes. A few exotic snakes had gotten into the wetlands when the winds died. During this period, Stressed-out pet owners believed they were releasing their adorable Burmese pythons into the wild. For years, nobody gave it any thought. Do what I think everybody wants to see is get these Burmese pythons out of the Florida Everglades. Snakes that appeared innocuous were present here and there, but they weren't. The initial glimpses evolved into something far more sinister. The population grew rapidly over the years. What began as a few pets being freed became a covert invasion. Now, according to specialists, there are between 100,000 and 300,000 pythons that slither across the wetlands of South Florida. Each female can lay nearly 100 eggs throughout the mating season. They proliferate more quickly than anyone could follow or catch them once they are concealed in the foliage. And the Everglades, a wildlife-rich paradise, is now becoming quiet. Devastating numbers also began to change. Populations of bobcats decreased by 87.5%, opossums by 98.5%, and raccoons by 93.9%. Deer sightings have decreased by more than 90% in some places, and even marsh rabbits, which are usually a regular sight, have all but disappeared. The pythons shifted what they didn't eat. The Everglades were losing the equilibrium that kept them together. What's the worst? Not until it was almost too late did anyone notice. We now start to wonder why these snakes were invincible. Because everything about the environment in Florida seemed to be geared toward their success. The ideal residence was made possible by the heat, humidity, and limitless food supply. They flourished since there were no natural predators to control them. They were practically invisible in the grass due to their camouflage. It was like battling an unseen foe for scientists. It looked like 10 more snakes appeared for every one that was removed. The invaders were devouring heaven, which they had discovered. Furthermore, these were not your typical snakes. They could ingest a deer whole since they were apex predators. Some of them weighed more than 200 pounds and grew to be more than 20 feet long. The world was shocked when videos of pythons fighting alligators began to appear. The python has supplanted native predators as the dominant species in a food web. Nature was suffering greatly as what previously represented Florida's untamed beauty was now being used as a warfare. The ecological and economic stakes, however, extended well beyond wildlife. With an ecosystem worth $31.5 billion, the Everglades provide millions of people with flood control, fishing, and tourism. However, the threat posed by pythons increased. More than 23,000 snakes have been collected by hunters and researchers, 
Yet that represents hardly 1% of the total number of snakes in the world. The wetland that once throbbed with life now resonates with absence, while the others remain hidden, reproducing, expanding, and consuming in silence. Furthermore, nothing seemed to work while officials looked for answers. The laughing over Florida's crazy idea to fight back would soon give way to silence as the environment collapsed from within. The true irony was that the end of the world had already come, even though everyone was making fun of the plan. It was silent, eerie, and all too real. It wasn't blazing or loud. People thought there must be a way to reclaim the Everglades for a long time. What transpired subsequently demonstrated how misguided that optimism was. Failure and desperation, Florida's reaction to the Python invasion initially resembled something from an adventure movie. In order to find the slithering invaders, officials opened the gates to hunters, scientists, and anybody else with the courage to trek across miles of swamp. The Florida Python Challenge, a 10-day competition that sounded both bold and desperate, was created in 2013. In essence, hundreds of people arrived prepared to do what decades of policy had not been able to do, with hooks, traps, and steely nerves. It had turned into a yearly event by 2024, 857 people from all. Over the United States, and even Canada, came to compete against the most well-known inhabitants of the Everglades in that one year alone. 195 Burmese pythons were captured, garnering public attention and appreciation. Hailed as a hero in the battle to rescue Florida's wild heart, the winner took home a $10,000 grand prize. For a brief instant, it seemed as though triumph could finally be attainable. However, the figures revealed a more sinister reality. The 2025 competition set new records a year later. About 60 pythons were captured by the top hunter, Taylor Stanberry, which was literally the most in the history of the competition. Participants removed 294 snakes in all which seemed like a huge number until you considered how tiny it was in comparison to the estimated tens of thousands of snakes that are still slithering free. The Everglades were gasping, not recovering. Additionally, the number of pythons was growing faster than anyone could keep track of. The state hired experts to compensate for the deficiency. To scout the marshes all year long, the South Florida Water Management District employed two dozen professional hunters on an hourly basis. These were professional python chasers equipped with all that science has to give, not weekend explorers. The snakes, however, always appeared to be one step ahead. Thus, Florida experimented with high-tech warfare, which was novel. In order to trick pythons into striking, engineers created robotic rabbits that released scent and heat. Dog teams were trained to detect reptile scent trails. Drones hovered over the wetlands, looking for movement. And wildlife biologists even fitted GPS collars to possums and raccoons to monitor potential predatory areas. Using scout snakes, equipped with tiny radio transmitters to guide researchers to hidden breeding females, was one of the most audacious attempts. In this ecological chess game, humans were focused on winning, However, the snakes appeared to spread more quickly the harder they struggled. More than 23,000 pythons have been taken out of the wild by contractors since 2017, until you find out that experts estimate that to be fewer than 1% of the population, it seems extraordinary. Large-scale eradication efforts seldom had an impact. Dozens more hatched somewhere else each time a hunter took one out. It was like attempting to use a bucket to empty the ocean. It was difficult to conceal the frustration. The stark reality that the pythons were not going anywhere had been reached after years of work, billions of dollars in funding, and an unending number of experiments. Slowing them down was the best that anyone could do. Scientists started acknowledging in public what many had secretly feared, that complete eradication is not achievable. Nobody had discovered a way to reclaim the Everglades which these predators had claimed as their own. The sense of powerlessness increased with each failed attempt. Drones flew higher, 
hunters waded further into the marshes and technology advanced, yet snakes adapted more quickly. They ignored human-drawn borders as they slithered north into new habitats. All of the solutions appeared to come to a dead end. This mounting sense of loss drove Florida to the brink. If technology, money, and manpower couldn't stop them, what could? A crazy concept started to form somewhere in that frustration, and scientists were presented with an insurmountable dilemma. How do you defeat an adversary that you cannot see, capture, or kill quickly enough? The perverted present from Pythons. What if something considerably smaller was hiding underneath Florida's wetlands instead of the pythons writhing through them? You see, an invisible parasite that is currently changing the ecological narrative of the state arrived with the invaders deep within the Everglades. Its name is Rileatiella orientalis, better known as the snake lungworm. Additionally, this parasite is subtly causing a completely new form of pandemonium. Even though pythons often attract everyone's attention, often attract everyone's attention, it all began with an unnoticed hitchhiker. The lungworm was first introduced to Florida's wild environment from Asia, traveling alongside Burmese pythons. The parasite entered the local food chain as if it had been waiting for the right opportunity after the snakes had taken up residence. The worm's eggs were first delivered into the swamp by the python droppings, then the cockroaches consumed the waste, and finally the frogs and lizards consumed the roaches. Then, without realizing it, the native snakes swallowed the true threat when they pursued those smaller prey. The larvae started their trip inside the snake's body. They entered the lungs after tunneling through the stomach, where they developed and nourished. This virus is devastating to many native snakes, particularly the smaller ones. The animal is gradually strangled from the inside by the worms, which feed on blood and tissue. Some snakes just starve to death since they are no longer able to hunt. Breathing becomes difficult, and their energy levels drop. Scientists have discovered snakes with open lung lesions, pneumonia, and, in certain instances, dozens of worms scuttling out of their mouths. Once you've seen it, you don't forget it. When scientists realized how far the lungworm had spread, it was a tremendous shock. The parasite has already infected 18 native snake species in Florida, and it is currently present in dozens of counties, some of which are as far north as Jacksonville and even the Panhandle, according to some accounts. The lungworm is no longer waiting for the pythons, even though they initiated this. The scary thing is that it's navigating through Florida's native snakes by itself. The equilibrium is upset when local snakes perish. Entire ecosystems are shaken by the proliferation of rodents and the loss of food for small carnivores. These snakes are more than just supporting characters. They are also predators, prey, and pest controllers. Scientists fear that even if every python were removed tomorrow, the lungworm would still persist. In the very species designed to maintain the balance of Florida's wild, it is present, living, and growing. Florida is deploying robotic rabbits to help capture invasive Burmese pythons in the Everglades. There is one peculiar twist to this tale, though. The native pit viper, the Florida cottonmouth, appears to be immune to the parasite's assault. Nobody is certain of the reason. Is it inherited? Diet? Over time, a natural immunity developed? Whatever. The reason is that, in an otherwise bleak picture, it's one of the few uplifting secrets. What started out as a fight against enormous snakes has evolved into something far more intricate. The unseen invader is currently outpacing the predator that brought it here in terms of dissemination. No treatment, no cure, and no obvious means of halting it. More parasites are discharged into the wild with each diseased snake, and the ecosystem is weakened with each death. The fight against pythons in Florida was already difficult. It is currently facing an opponent that is too little to notice, and that is not going away. The state believed that it had a predator problem. Rather, it could be witnessing the gradual emergence of a completely new epidemic. The notions became more irrational as the crisis deepened. Furthermore, 
One scheme in particular stretched the bounds of belief. The laughable scheme. It sounded like something from a late-night comedy sketch when the news first broke. To combat the state's invasive python problem, Florida officials declared they were reintroducing hundreds of eastern indigo snakes, a native, non-venomous species, into the wild. Just the title set off a chain reaction. In a matter of hours, jokes, memes, and incredulity flooded social media. This is the ninth year state agencies have released eastern indigo snakes back into the wild in the Florida panhandle. In the end, Florida's fight was never just against the python or the parasite or the chaos crawling beneath the swamp. It was a struggle against time and against the illusion that humanity can ever truly control nature. What began as an invasion of snakes became a mirror, reflecting everything fragile about our world, how one small imbalance can unravel centuries of harmony. The Everglades were supposed to be eternal, a living, breathing wilderness immune to human mistakes. But when the storms came, when the snakes arrived, when the parasites took hold, nature didn't fight back with rage or fire. It simply changed, quietly, permanently. And that is perhaps the most terrifying truth of all, that the end of a world doesn't come with explosions or headlines. It comes in silence, under the water, while the rest of us scroll, laugh, and move on. Florida's desperate experiment, releasing predators to fight predators, wasn't madness. It was a final prayer whispered into a vanishing wilderness, a reminder that when the wild begins to fall apart, the echo doesn't stop at the swamp. It reaches us all, because the Everglades were never just Florida's problem. They were Earth's warning, a prophecy written in scales, silence, and survival.